Dear viewers, thank you so much for joining us here in our special online edition of the 18th uh, Warsaw uh, Jewish Film Festival. My name is Lee Nagler. I, I am the head of the Film Selection Committee of the festival, and I am very honored and proud uh, to welcome the renowned Israeli director Avi Nesher with us. Hi, Avi. Good pleasure uh, meeting you. Thank online. you, you too, you too. Unfortunately, only online, but next year we hope to meet in Warsaw. Uh, we know that you are extremely occupied these days working on your new film, and we highly appreciate your time with us. Uh, before we start, I would like to introduce you and your work in a few words. Uh, you are without doubt Israel's most known and most successful filmmaker. With 20 feature films at, to your credit as director, your work has received prestigious awards and nominations at major international festivals. You grew up in New York, you went to Columbia University, uh, and um, you came to Israel to serve in the army. In 1977, you have made your first feature film, The Troop, which became the highest grossing Israeli film at uh, the time and was recently voted one of the 10 best feature films of all time by the Israeli Film Critics Association. In the 1980s, you moved to work in Hollywood and in the beginning of the new millennium, you have returned to Israel and almost instantly you became one of the most dominant voices in the Israeli filmmaking industry. With a very long list of highly professional striking films that combine the personal with the political. Films which are influenced visually from Hollywood cinema but also from European art house cinema and touch the most sensitive points of the Israeli society's melting pot. For the 18th edition of our festival, we chose to screen three of your films, The Secrets, Past Life, and The Other Story, which will be the closing event of our festival. Watching those three films together, one cannot overlook uh, your intensive occupation with the destinies of young women and the search for redemption. Those women, they try to establish their femininities through the rebel rebellion against their parents. Can you tell us a bit about those choices? Well, I, I think it's, it's really kind of strange to talk about one's cinema, you know, but I, I used to be a film critic, so I will try to step away from myself as a filmmaker and uh, talk about myself in the third person. My, my cinema from my very first movie dealt with rebellion. The whole notion of rebellion is one that I'm fascinated with, you know, the, uh, the need to constantly change, the need to, to improve, you know, to push the envelope, to take the human experience further. So my very first movie, The Troop, which, which I made when I was 24, uh, was very, very controversial because it included a rebellion against the army in a scene which is very famous in Israel. And, and at that time, you know, to do, to rebel against the army in Israel was really an act of outrage. But th there was a question of, of morality as opposed to duty, you know, and of course I'm always in favor of morality. Um, so uh, I, I really, almost every single one of my movies uh, had uh, to do with rebels. Um, and um, in, in this new century, I really think the greatest rebels of the century are women. I think the greatest revolution is that of women. If, if in the 20th century, maybe the greatest revolution was uh, one against discrimination, you know, civil rights, you know, integration uh, in America. I think, I think this is the century of women. And I see young women as the heroes of our time. And it's very, very easy for me to identify with their struggle and their hopes and their aspirations. I also, uh, you know, I became a father 24 years ago. I, I have, I have a, a daughter who is now older and I, I watched her growing up. And it was really fascinating for me to see the way she, she positions herself in the world, not giving up on her femininity. But, you know, uh, she had a movie selected to, uh, you know, a women's festival and she refused to ever participate because she did, she did not want to compete against women. She wanted to compete against everybody, you know? And I really liked that attitude. <laughs> so 
So I, I'm just very much interested in the whole notion of rebellion. You know, I think uh, Leon Trotsky called it the constant rebellion, you know, the revolution that never ends. You know, I think he paid with his life for wanting the revolution to, yeah. uh, to not to end. But, but this is something cinematically I'm very interested in. And every time I make a movie, I try to think of it as my very first movie. It's as though I have invented completely, you know, uh, a new beginning for myself. Um, coming back to those three specific films, uh, those three films, I think, they shade a very unique light on the Israeli society in general. In The Secrets, for instance, you chose not to show the secular world at all in Israel. You chose to expose the audience to an ultra-Orthodox uh, environment and uh, to the invasion of a European Christian woman to it a very famous actress, of course. Uh, in past life, you go back to Israel in the 70s where the political and the personal clash. So you are talking about the political turnover, the burden, of course, of the traumatic uh, Holocaust past um, and the difficulties of young couples in the personal level. And you shot it partly in Berlin and partly in uh, Lodz. Uh, and in the other story, you return to the subject of faith and religion, and uh, you use a lot of Christian iconography as well, and spiritual rituals. And it is interesting for me to understand, do you think that uh, the mainstream Israeli society is not interesting in order to be uh, depicted in uh, your films? Or maybe you think there is no mainstream, that we are a collection of, uh, that the Israeli society is a collection of uh, subcultures, of course, influenced from the outside, from Europe, from uh, the events in the past? Well, for me, the most interesting thing about the Israeli experience is Israel is at the flashpoint between modernity and orthodoxy. You know, I mean, people tend to think of Israel as, you know, you know, the Western world and the Arab world, but it's much more complicated than that because Israeli society within Israel is completely divided between the future and the past. And there's a very strong sense of the past in Israel. You know, uh, William Faulkner has a very famous saying, you know, the past is, is, not, is never dead. The past is not even in the past. You know, our past is very much in the present and very much dictating our future. So for me to do a movie about Tel Aviv, you know, Tel Aviv is the same as Berlin and as London and New York. It's very modern, it's very hip, it's very cool, great restaurants. And, uh, but that's not what's unique about Israel. In Israel, this clash between the old world and the new world happen on every day. You know, you go into a bus, you have men in black who would not get near women. You get young women, you know, with very provocative dresses. I mean, you have a combination of, of everything which is right and everything which is wrong with the world that we live in. And, and I have great respect to people who are unlike me. And one of the things which are very important for me is not to make movies just about people like myself. I think that's very, very dull. And I think it's very limiting. And I am as imperfect as anybody. And so are the people who are not like me. And it's interesting for me to make movies about people from different worlds that come together and discovered that they are as flawed as they are wonderful together. And Israel is really, um, I, I do not know any country in the world where you have people with such contradictory background living within you know, the same block. And so this, this clash, this constant butting of the head, which, which you know, happens everywhere in the world, but not with the same intensity as Israel, is something that I very much focus on. For me, it's, it's the very human experience. But this must uh, require lots of research and you work together with other people. You wrote, you wrote uh, some of the uh, scripts of the film, we, uh, films with other people. Well, what, what I do is, is for me, uh, you know, as a filmmaker, I have two different personalities. You know, as a director, I speak the language of cinema. And for me, the language of cinema is very individual and very unique. And I am also a writer, but I'm very limited to my own experience. So I always bring in somebody who has no idea how to write screenplays, but is very familiar with a world which is different than my own. And the very act of writing with somebody who's different than you creates dialogue. And my movies are about dialogue. So the screenplay always has two points of view of myself and the other writer, which are in dialogue. 
but the movie itself has one language, which is the language of cinema. And I, I used to be a jazz musician, you know, and I find- oh, really? I, I, yeah, wow. I, I, not, not, not very good, but very enthusiastic. And I find this whole notion of bringing musicians together to create something, you know, is, is really, really interesting. So I'm very, very interested in the other, you know, I mean, the, the movie is called The Other Story because I have great interest in the other. And I, I think the most dangerous thing that we can do is assume that our, uh, our way is the right way and the other way is the wrong way. And for me to explore this inter interchange of ideas and this tension in this warfare between these different universes that coexist, for me, uh, that, that is the essence of, of the cinema I'm trying to make. Uh, there is something also uh, very beautiful about your work in the sense that you discover stars. So you take very young actors and you have very, very uh, good eye to, uh, to, to cast people who are really becoming then uh, big actors, stars, just to mention uh, Anya Buchstein, Joe, Joe Rieger, uh, Michal Stemmler, and I'm sure there is a very long list. Uh, and I think that this comes also from some kind of a commitment that you, to you, that you have to uh, film people, to the team. You feel that you are giving work to people and it makes you uh, part of a group. Uh, can you tell us something about it also in regards to your new uh, film, if you uh, would like to share something about it? Well, first of all, I, I love actors. You know, I mean, I do not consider actors as people who work for me. And I, I consider actors as people who create with me. You know, I, I said that I used to be a jazz musician. So for me, actors are the musicians that I play with. And every time I make a casting decision, it's actually a writing decision. Because when I choose an actor, I will work with the actor on the character. And by the time we are done, there will be a much greater sense of truth. Because as a writer, I can write about myself and maybe my daughter or my mother. Or I'm very limited. We are all very limited. but. It, the actor, you know, represents a whole different point of view. And if you are open to it, and if you let the actor really participate in the process of creating the character, the character becomes very, very complex and very interesting. And of course, it really makes it possible for the actor to shine and, 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 and to be truthful. So it's true. I mean, in, in the past, I've given opportunity to many, many young actors to play significant leads. And, and they were excellent because, you know, uh, it's interesting in acting school, they teach you to lie because you're not really Othello, you're not really Ophelia, you know. But in my movies, I, I want you not to lie. If you play a character, I will change the character to such an extent that every word that the character speaks will be something that you as an actor is able to, uh, to, to, to stand behind. So it's, it's a very, very close relationship between me and my actors. And, and very often, you know, I mean, when I say cut, the actors is surprised that we're actually shooting a movie and not living a life. And what about your new project? Uh, I read in the Israeli newspapers that you had many difficulties because of COVID, of course, but you insist to continue. And uh, would you like to share a few words? Uh, well, what are you working on now in those moments? <laughs> again, it's, it's part of my affinity, you know, to, to understand the past in order to, uh, to figure out the future. Uh, it's a story that takes place in 1948, uh, birth of a nation, you know, Israel uh, came out in, in a really miraculous way. Um, but at the same time, you know, there were people on the other side. And, you know, when, whenever people make movies, they're usually us and them, you know, the good and the bad. But life is not like this. You know, in life, you have a situation where, you know, there are two different sides. In, in case of the Israeli experience, you know, uh, there are two different people who have two different stories about one set of facts. You know, and people think that the, the Israeli Arab conflict is about land and it's about security and it's about many things. For me, it's about story. You know, for me, it's about the way each side perceives their side and their story. And the only way for this thing ever to be over again is for both sides to understand that these stories will always be conflicting. But one can really live with conflicting stories as long as you respect 
the other point of view. So, so it's, it's, uh, it's a story about a certain incident that took place in 1948, and there's an Egyptian side, and there's an Israeli side, and they're all young people, and they're all revolutionaries, and they're all totally convinced that they're about to do something really important. And by being young, of course, they do stupid things and funny things and romantic things and some tragic results and some not tragic results. But basically, it makes you understand that there is not one story you know, to, to what we call history. That history is not comprised just of facts. History is comprised of points of view. And the movie is called Portrait of Victory because the whole idea of victory is a very elusive one. You know, uh, victory and defeat is just a matter of definition. So, um, and you know, for me, it's a miracle that we were able to shoot. It's, it's relatively a big movie and uh, a difficult movie. Uh, we have been shooting for six weeks. We have two weeks to go uh, and we can, we can stop tomorrow. You know, I mean, I can right. come to the set and we can find out and uh, it's it, for me, this is such a tragic time in, in human history that for me coming to the set and meeting all those people that I work with is, is, um, is an expression of hope, you know? And since all movie houses are closed, for me to make a movie right now is an expression of my belief that yes, we will come back, all of us in all countries and there will, there will be cinema and we will survive physically and art will survive spiritually. So let's keep the hope and uh, I wish and I hope we would uh, watch your film in Warsaw next year together with you in the audience, the new film. Thank you very, very much for this interview, Mr. Avi Neshel, and all the best. Uh, it was a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you very much and I hope Thank to be in Warsaw you. next year. Most definitely. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.